My name is Dr. Henry Prince. I'm the medical director of Hyperbaric Medical Solutions. That's the facility that you're now visiting. And we're very excited about tonight's program. I just want to start off by telling you a little bit about Hyperbaric Medical Solutions. But we are delving into some of the exciting things that we believe are the future of hyperbarics, uh, including the treatment of traumatic brain injury, chronic concussion, stroke, uh, neurological diseases um, such as MS, Parkinson's. And tonight you're going to hear a little bit about how we believe that hyperbaric oxygen therapy in conjunction with nutritional uh, changes may be helpful in the, the overall treatment regimen for cancer. Today's presentation is being presented by Dr. Dominic D'Agostino, which is going to begin to help us explore the ketogenic diet, particularly as it relates to the use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and the various conditions that it may help to improve. I was funded by the Office of Navy Research to understand CNS oxygen toxicity, which manifests itself as a seizure. So to understand fundamentally what's going on in oxygen toxicity, we had to build technologies that allowed us to visualize cells and, and pieces of tissue and even do experiments in whole animals. And as we started getting a whole picture from the cells to the molecule to the physiology, we realized that brain energy metabolism was a critical component, uh, or I'll say preserving brain energy metabolism in the face of the oxidative stress which occurs in oxygen toxicity seizures, which is much higher than what you'd experience with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We realized that the anti-seizure approaches needed to target specifically certain pathways in the brain. In looking at the literature, we saw that the ketogenic diet was able to manage seizures when drugs failed. So uh, much of my work has been on the diet, but also developing substances that can mimic the diet. A lot of doctors don't realize even now that we've, there's studies that were done in, at Harvard in 1967 to show that in a fasted state, when we, in the absence of, of eating, our body mobilizes and burns up the stored glycogen, and that basically ends up as sugar. And then, and then we start tapping into our fat reserves for energy, but our brain does not efficiently transport the fatty acids across the blood-brain barrier. What we do is that we have accelerated rates of fat oxidation in the liver and these fatty acids get converted into water-soluble fat molecules uh, that allow it to be readily transported across the blood-brain barrier. So in the absence of food, in the absence of carbohydrates, our brain has a metabolic flexibility to adapt from using glucose to using ketone bodies. So to that being in a state of either fasting ketosis or nutritional ketosis, which is limiting carbohydrates and elevating fat, uh, dietary fat, uh, the shift in our physiology to the physiological state of ketosis uh, helps us preserve brain energy homeostasis in ways that we're just starting to realize now. So we're looking at the effects on gene expression, on the, ex the effects on different inflammatory uh, profiles. So we're understanding now that the brain can use ketones as an alternative energy source. It can use it up to 60 to 80% of its energy uh, after prolonged fasting. So we want to harness that ability uh, and circumvent, more or less, the dietary restrictions associated with getting into that physiological state, which take uh, many days to even a, a week or more to achieve that physiological state. If we can achieve it in 15 to 20 minutes with a synthetic or even a naturally uh, developed compound, that's what we want to do. And that's all, most of our efforts have been towards that. With traumatic brain injury, what you have is uh, kind of like a myriad of things going on. But th the best way to characterize traumatic brain injury from a clinical point of view and to to understand the, the patient's ability to recover from that injury, a, a PET scan is probably one of the most uh, best tools that you can use. And, and the PET scan will really determine that person's ability to, to the outcome of that and, and the, the level of damage that they've had. So uh, from my perspective, 
and, and many others that I've talked to who, who study this, restoring brain energy metabolism and reducing inflammation are the most important things um, to do as soon as possible and to sustain that. So we talked about ketones are an alternative fuel for your brain. Uh, when someone has traumatic brain injury, a number of events happen on a molecular level that prevent the brain from using glucose as an energy source. So I won't get into the details, but there's an internalization of the glucose transporter that makes the brain essentially insulin resistant. And there's also a, um, the, 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 uh, the step that, I guess you would call it the rate limiting step that allows the brain to use glucose for energy is an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, or PDH complex. And that is rather rapidly inactivated when if there's any kind of blunt trauma or disease pathology in the brain, even with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, with Alzheimer's, you actually see decreased brain glucose activity uh, in people with dementia. And traumatic brain injury is like Alzheimer's disease in real time, really, if you look at the two. So the, the, the thing that you wanna do immediately, what, from my perspective and, and from what I know, is restore uh, brain energy metabolism. And, and also hyperbaric oxygen is a way to restore, to re-oxygenate uh, pockets of areas of the brain that are that are hyper uh, or hypo oxygenated so that's really important to do as soon as possible and to continue with that uh, to continue with that treatment so the elevation of stem cells in the blood is not insignificant it's something that you would see sort of with the drugs like like Nupagen or Leukine, which is uh, GCSF or GMCSF. And these are very expensive compounds and they have a lot of side effects. And they're given to patients, you know, after chemo to restore their blood counts. Uh, there are some clinical trials, I think, looking at these compounds in traumatic brain injury. But we know that hyperbaric oxygen can actually elevate stem cells to the same level of these very expensive compounds that have side effects. So the use of hyperbarics in elite athletes is uh, still on the fence as, term, as far as efficacy and the studies still need to be done. Uh, there are quite a few athletes out there at a high level that are, that are interested in this and, that, and some of them are using it. Um, we know the basic science uh, has shown us that the use of hyperbaric oxygen mobilizes stem cells in the blood. And, and it also uh, causes these stem cells to hone in on sites of injury to assist in repair and maybe decrease inflammation. We're, we're lo we've looked at the science and the science is being also continuously explored. And on the clinical side, the actual art of delivery is part of the exploration. And it's not necessarily um, <clears throat> The, the insurance companies or the health systems that are looking at this piece of it, it's really the individual person, the person who is seeking out various alternatives or additions to their care process to support them to the ability to be more optimally well.